Well, hi, this is Sue Doyle with OT Lifestyle Solutions, and today we're talking with Lynn Crawford. Um, Lynn is a friend I met while we were both volunteers with the Chronic Pain Program at Battlegrounds Healthcare. Lynn, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing now. Well, the reason that I stopped volunteering with Battleground Healthcare was because my husband became very ill with dementia. And um, shortly after his illness, he actually died two years after his diagnosis, which is rather rapid. And it was kind of a freight train for my family. One of the things that I noticed is that there was not a tremendous amount of support in the community for the care partners of people that had dementia. I did discover Hope Dementia Support Groups, and while I had never attended them, when my husband died, I asked that uh, in lieu of flowers, donations be made to Hope. Through that connection, I actually uh, got to know the organization a little bit and joined them as a facilitator for support groups. And a year after that, I joined their board and a year after that became the executive director of Hope Dementia Support. So that's what I've been up to. So tell me a little bit about Hope Dementia and what's its mission and what um, things are you doing in the community? I know COVID's changed that a little bit, um, but it seems like I see pretty a lot of active announcements coming from there. Well, fortunately, Zoom has saved Hope so that all of our support groups are currently on Zoom. And uh, Hope has been around as a nonprofit since 2012. So it's been quite a while. And what we provide, which is unique, is weekly support groups for the care partners of loved ones living with dementia. So our mission is to provide support, number one, education number two, and advocacy for those care partners. Um, we have nine groups in Vancouver. We have three groups in the greater uh, Portland metro area. Uh, in addition to that, we provide a monthly education on dementia, and that's provided uh, by experts in the field. And I know that that Sue Doyle has provided education for us at one point, and it's on the last Tuesday of every month. And we've been very fortunate to uh, to have folks generous with their time to provide that. And currently, that's also on Zoom. Just recently, like within the last month, we have partnered with the Agency on Aging and Disabilities to uh, sponsor a program out of the University of Washington called Dementia Friends, which provides uh, an hour information session to anyone in the community who would like to attend related to what it's like to have dementia and how we can best support those people in the community. We also have a number of programs that we've been able to develop and support for people that have dementia. One is called Marianne's Babies, which provides baby dolls or robotic pets for the individual with dementia. There's tremendous uh, uh, amount of literature that talks about how it can be beneficial. And we have some lovely videos of our uh, individuals that we've given the babies to and it just proves how sweet that response can be. We also have a program called Celebrating Dreams which allows us to uh, provide funding for something as simple as a birthday or anniversary celebration or as complex as uh, um, a few hours of respite care for that care partner so that they can get a little bit of relief. We recently have developed activity boxes that we provide for the two hospitals here in Vancouver, Legacy and Peace Health, that contain items that helps keep that individual with dementia busy if they happen to end up in the hospital or if they are newly admitted to a community and just need something to uh, um, kind of take their mind off of the new situation. Uh, we 
are partnering with music therapists here in Vancouver to number one, prime, provide music programs for individuals with, with dementia because of the fact that uh, one of the very last things to go, if it ever goes, is that love of music. And uh, we're also trying to figure out the technologies that we would want to provide for people um, uh, such as headphones um, or some as simple as Alexa to uh, have playlists and provide the music of their era. So those are some of the programs that we're working on. So we've imagined, managed to stay busy. It sounds like it. You um, And some of the education stuff, uh, we were talking about the one that you just had recently. Um, what was that one? That was uh, anticipatory grieving when your loved one has dementia. Anybody that, that uh, has had experience with dementia knows that that they lose the person long before that person dies. And it just, um, um, this was by Ann Richardson, who is a chaplain and a uh, spiritual guide. And uh, she just talked about some of the issues that go on as you're anticipating the loss of someone. And it was, exceptional and what you and I were talking about is that uh, because we've done this a couple of times before and my experience this time with Zoom and because it's a webinar was the fact that people were able to share via the chat function and maintain anonymity so they actually uh, um, shared some things that I don't think they would have ever shared in person. Yeah, so I think in front of their partner or yeah exactly exactly and um we do them on facebook live so they're uh people are able to see them real time and we also record and then put them on our youtube channel so they're available forever good i'll put links to those both in the show notes when i post this on youtube too for people who are interested in following up so they are there it also means that people can join them um, from anywhere at the moment, right? Exactly, exactly. So you have another one you were just telling me about coming up that seemed um, like it would be really helpful as well. Yes, um, April is actually uh, the month that, that we kind of celebrate National Healthcare Decisions Day. And what that is, is an encouragement for everyone to complete their advanced directives. And we are fortunate enough to have Dr. Barack Gaster from the University of Washington, who has actually created the dementia directive. And he will be talking about advanced directives when your loved one has dementia. Um, he's a really good speaker and it's a very important topic because we need to know as soon as possible what that person's wishes were. I was very fortunate that my husband and I had talked about it many years in advance because both of us were healthcare professionals and I knew exactly what he wanted even though he wasn't capable of telling me. Yeah, and, and that's such an important decision having been through it with my mother-in-law and looking at some of the issues involved when family and other people don't understand. Making those decisions, making them known as soon as possible, having it in writing is really a useful guide. So I think that would be a great presentation for people to be able to listen to. That um, will be April 27th. April 27th. At 6.30 in the evening and that specific time if people are listening elsewhere. And then um, I was really interested a little bit in what you were saying about the Dementia Friends program. And I think you said this is available um, nationwide, but we're focusing here, of course, in Clark County, Washington. But the goal is to start looking at having community options and things that are more um, friendly to persons with dementia. Explain a little bit more about where that program's going and what you're hoping to do with that in Hope Dementia. Okay, well, that, that program came, came to us from uh, the UK and it came to them from Japan and they're, they're really quite advanced in uh, 
caring for individuals with dementia. In fact, the uh, National Health Service uh, supports it completely in the UK. So it's quite different here. Uh, we have a number of states who have actually joined. It's Dementia Friends USA if people were going to go and look at a website. But a number of states have, have joined that program. And Washington State has joined it, again, through the University of Washington. Um, and so we have contracted with them to be able to provide the programs. We're the fourth county in the state that is able to do that. And basically what it involves is providing one hour information sessions to the community that talks about, okay, this is what it's like to live with dementia. And it gives some very concrete examples that it walks you through. And then how it might be that you can provide better support for those individuals in the community. And we're very excited. We've actually trained a number of champions and what champions do is provide those information sessions. And we have done three information sessions uh, ourselves because we literally have just started that program. And there's one scheduled at 10 o'clock on Friday morning. And they're all via Zoom right now. Okay. That's um that sounds like an interesting um thing for community members to get engaged in. Um and as I was sharing with you, there's a new program out for occupational therapists called Skill to Skills to Care, um, which is looking at providing support with caregivers, which is also actually covered under Medicare. So that's a very structured program where I think we need to talk a little bit more about being able to work together to provide some of those supports. That's very exciting to me to know that, that yeah. uh, because you know it's one thing to to acknowledge that people with dementia live in our community and maybe we need to remember that they're human beings and it, you know that's uh, you can tell I just climbed on my soapbox that uh, because you have dementia does not mean that you lose your personhood and I, we want to remind people of that you still need to look people in the eye and they still know if you are not treating them well. And uh, that's that's the reason that we have joined Dementia Friends and that we're so excited about it. Yeah, it sounds like such an exciting um, thing. And it sounds like even with COVID, you've kept really busy and being able to still support a lot of people in the community and improve quality of lives and change what's happening. Well, we're very fortunate to have the technology. If we didn't have technology, we would no longer have hope because all of our uh, support groups have gone to the uh, Zoom platform. And so we have all of those groups that are on via Zoom. Now we've lost some folks because they just can't do the technology, but we've gained more because it's so convenient for them to be able to do that. And as I was telling you, we even have people from as far as Florida who are have come on to our calls. I, I was going to ask you, that's interesting. Are there other HOPE communities around the country or is this something unique here? This program, you know, this organization is a nonprofit that is exclusive to us. Oops, your sound, you got muted, Lynn. Phone call, sorry, got rid of it. <laughs> call her back later. Uh, yes, so you were saying this um, hope is is exclusive to this community, um, but are there other similar organizations around the country? There are definitely support groups around the country. Um, I, I'm not really familiar with their format. I do know that uh, there are quite a number of Facebook support groups that um, um, I follow just because I'm interested. And, uh, and there are other online support groups as well. So it, there are ones that are available out there. Okay, well, well, thanks for sharing with us. And I think this is a great um, opportunity for more community collaboration, but also just looking at the things that you're doing and the things that therapists and, and stuff can do to help and support. Um, I think we need to be working on more collaborations. 
well i'm excited about that and i appreciate your time this morning all right thanks